everybody, it's that time again. Make yourself comfortable, grab a cold snack, and we'll uh, have a chat about a few things. Um, I've been out bailing now for a while, which is probably why you haven't heard too much from me. Um, I really, well, the purpose of this is because I've been promising you for a long time. I'm going to talk to you about why I love this 6465 Massey. I'm never going to get rid of it. Um, so, I've come back to the yard to blow off and I've got the cable gone on the uh, kickers on the um, on the baler. So I'm going to fix that and uh, we'll have a look around the tractor while I'm doing it. Okay, it's a bit windy out and I've got one of these little um, devices on here. Just need some eyes stuck on it and it will look just like, well, who knows. Anyway, um, yeah, I've got one of these little things which hopefully will cut down on the wind noise. Um, anyway, let's have a walk around and have, have a quick look at the tractor. As you can see, it's a Massey 6465. It's got Dyna Shift. Um, it's the Tier 2 model, which is got that front end. And in my opinion, it's quite a nice looking thing. Yeah, it's the fairly basic model. I don't have front suspension. I don't really need front suspension, I don't do that much road work. Um, got 1106 engine, uh, lightly turbo. Um, what else can you see from outside? It's on 38s and 28s. Um, we'll talk about that another day if anyone's really interested. can I say? Well, the main reason I like it is because it is simple. There's no electronic engine management on it. It's got Dyna 4 or Dyna Shift, which is again lovely. Simple thing to operate, simple to use, um, simple to repair and simple to maintain as well. But when you look at this thing, everybody remembers the 3125 and everybody would say that the 3125 is a real legendary tractor, it is a superb thing, and they were, they were a great machine, revolutionary for their time. Well, they went on to become the 6180, 6190, something like that, and then the 6280. And then came this, all pretty much the same size, 120, 130 kind of horsepower. But if you took the tin work and the cab off all of those tractors and stood them side by side, ignoring the colour of the frame, yeah, but they're pretty much the same machine. Um, yeah, the 3125 had a 10. 06. This has got 1106. I think the 1106 came in with the 6280. But 1006 and 1106, not huge differences. Dyna shift, full speed. Um, again, pretty much identical to what was in the um, 3125 and things since. Back end. Yeah, and I'm sorry, it's dirty because it's uh, very dry and very dusty here at the moment. But, yeah, it is. Well, you can trace its heritage very much back to the 3125 and the models in between. And to me, I think this is probably the, the Tier 4 ones before they started putting Valtra engines in them are the last genuine masses, the last real, um, well, 
I think this was, they still owned Perkins at the time and this was made. Uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, last of, last of its line. Anyway, that's not the only reason I love it. It is comfortable, it's easy to drive, it's got air conditioning and uh, you can sit in there and, and work. Oh, it's also very compact. Um, for its day, it was a real, what people like to call a pocket rocket, I guess, because it was 100 and, I think it, um, somewhere in sort of mid-120s, maybe 130, I don't know. Um, and the dimensions of it were small. It's manoeuvrable, it's compact, um, perfect match for that baler. Anything bigger and you'd probably twist bits off it anything smaller and you'd struggle to drive it in a heavy crop. Yeah, it's got everything I want. Right, let's have a look around then. Um, fairly straightforward instrument panel there. Uh, you've got your little, uh, in that LCD panel on the side, you've got ground speed, you've got error codes, anything like that comes up. Um, again, this is the real basic model, so there's nothing fancy here. Adjustable steering wheel, um, you can, comes forwards and backwards and up and down, whatever they call it. Indicator and wipers and stuff. Um, up here you've got your fridge, um, yeah, all, the, all the usual stuff. Air conditioned, it's the basic model so it's not got any fancy data stuff on it it's just the equivalent of the old Autotronic on the 300s, 3000s and 3100s whatever. A couple of spools, that's all I need um, four speed manual there with a range change on the side which you don't use on the move uh, it's got the controller for that green thing um, Bosch linkage controls, very simple, reliable, not a lot to go wrong with them. Um, PTO, hand throttle, and your speed matching for the dyna shift, uh, linkage up and down, um, height, linkage height, on your armrest there. Um, so the dyna shift, the shuttle, is on this lever here. So forward, reverse, you can hear it, uh, engine note change from this there. Um, to go up and down through dyna shift, it's one, two, three, four, back. And it's the same in reverse. And um, the display there shows F for forward, R for reverse, N for neutral, C is the uh, D. Those are the ranges inside Dynashift. It's a very, very simple tractor, but it's a it's 15 years old now, I think it is, but it is I find it still a nice place to work. I'm happy to sit here. Plenty of in-cab storage. It's got a passenger seat if you have a friend. Well, I don't, so that's never been used. Um, visibility's good. See the linkage down there nicely through the little oh, my shoulder. Um, see the pickup on the baler? Yeah. Nothing really to dislike on it. Everything to like. Anyway, that'll probably do for today. Oh, yeah, there is one more thing, and I don't know whether you'll be able to really pick it up, but sometimes when I'm working, um, maybe. Yeah, whatever I'm doing, subsoiling, something like that. I like to open the roof hatch, poke this thing out there. And just listen to that, because that does sound good and I never get tired of it. Anyway, to all of those of you who've made it this far, thank you for watching. Uh, we've still got a few things to come. There's going to be a bit of an ugliness delete on the 1080 when Lord Monk's done his thing with his will it start. Still don't know if it'll run on it. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to start stripping, stripping off some of the ugly bits, place an order for some of the parts. I've managed to track down a lot of the parts I need for it. So that would be good. Uh, there's going to be a 165 driving video um, fairly soon. I'll be getting stuck into the 175 as well. And if anyone's interested, there's going to be some bailing videos as well. So. If you want to see bailing videos, come back and watch. If you don't, don't. It's that simple. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.